it's day in day out that's the the number one thing that i hope to communicate to anyone watching that wants to know how they can become better um stronger more athletic or anything i don't know all the answers to those questions but i do have a simple one that will apply to all of them it's uh it's the beginning step it's day in day out do something every single day and um you have to understand that while we're not perfect we can't control everything there are way more things in our control than we sometimes like to admit. And so if you can just get into some kind of space, any space where you can perform a movement and challenge yourself in some way, do it. You've got to do it. It's just a reality of life that I think um, is, is the most important to accept is that nothing will ever come to you except for trouble, I think, is what you could say. Every so often you might find a blessing, but what we don't realize is that those blessings are a direct result from someone appreciating our effort, and that person is God. And so if you can't do anything else but just try today and try tomorrow and try the next day, that's all you got to do. And so I'm just going to leave that, I guess, as, as motivation for you today to get off your butt and go to the gym. It's something that I have to do to myself every single day because the hardest part for me about, I'm not going to say the hardest, but one thing that's been hard in all my efforts over the years to be fit and to be healthy is that as soon as I see results, as soon as I have tangible um, results from my efforts is when I, I sometimes I let the foot off the pedal. And in the past, I never had a, a good concept or grasp of the principle of discipline. And so this time I intend for it to be way different. I intend to do everything in my power to stay consistent. I'm not going to do everything in my power to go 100% every day. Um, I'm not going to do everything in my power to, to lift the heaviest weight. If I just apply as much energy as I can into being consistent, that'll be enough for me to keep going for years and years and years. That's, that's my hope at this point. So anyway, I'm applying that to the squat. I think squatting is one of the hardest um, movements, I guess. And th I know there's more complex motions and movements when it comes to like Olympic weightlifting, but it, it's all based around the squat. And there's so many things about alignment and posture and balance and, um, and exertion and all these things that make the squat that much more difficult than a bench press or a deadlift or any other um, exercise, I think. So this video i wanted to talk about what are mistakes that i have made in trying to improve my form and my, and my posture just so that um, anyone listening can make those improvements themselves so first thing that i've noticed is foot placement that when i have my feet a little bit narrower than like naturally i want to put my feet wide it allows me to sink down into my squat a little bit easier and unbeknownst to me at the time when I was doing it, it was shortening my range of motion and making it easier for me. Um, it's up to you to decide where you want to place your feet, but I would say place your feet in the place that gives you the most optimal range of motion, as in the the most natural, I guess, the, the, the strongest range of motion, if you can envision that. Second is that the, the reason why people don't get depth in their squat and you can even see me as an example in this video. I'm not perfect yet, but I do have a concept of what I can do to improve. When it comes to depth in the squat, I think it's the most important thing when it, to build strength. And what people don't realize is that squatting is not just a lower body movement. It's also an upper body movement. Look where the weight is placed. It's placed literally on top of your shoulders. And so as you bend your knees and, and flex your hips to go down into the squat, um, fold, your, fold your upper half down as well. You should picture maybe like a folding chair or something. Your top half should meet. I guess the, the easiest cue, the mental cue I give myself is to bring my armpits to my knees. And that will expose to you how weak your lower back is. And that's that's where I'm at right now is trying to strengthen my lower back. So I'm not perfect at it, but I'm doing my best that my mental cues are at the exact same moment or maybe even like a millisecond before a millisecond before I bend my knees to go into my squat, I'm already lowering my chest and my upper back and folding down into my knees. And that's just a mental cue I give because as soon as your body starts uh, feeling that weight, your knees and your hips are automatically going to adjust. It's not even anything you have to be consciously doing in most cases that I, I've found. 
So fold down into your squat. And that's why you have to have your knees at an optimal placement because if you don't, you're gonna damage your knees or, or like or put strain unnecessarily on parts of your body that that are not um are not ready to handle that. I don't know if that makes sense. Another thing, hand placement on the bar. Um try and find the most secure way to keep the weight on your um on your back without moving it too much side to side, forwards and backwards. The bar should not be rolling or tipping or anything. And um if you keep your hands just inside of um like I guess all bars are different. I, I don't know. The on my bar there's a there's two little uh lines on the ends or like towards um let's see let's say like two feet in from the from the bar there's like lines that i can put my hands on i always make sure i keep my hands inside those and i could go narrower i think but when you, it, it's tempting to put your hands out wide but when you do that is when you have less stability and one of the issues you can see here is that i'm i'm um, playing around with my with my training max right now which is a weight i'm totally capable of lifting but one thing i've noticed is that i don't always have the bar centered directly on my back so sometimes it's leaning from one side to the other and you can see how my body responds how one knee or one part one side of my body starts to shake or as i'm standing up like i, I lean one way it's just a huge equation it's like a big puzzle and you have to find all the pieces and put them together correctly but the what i've done to save my knees i was having knee issues and it's it's totally an issue of balance that's what i've come to find out and so like i said feet placement fold down into yourself into like a like a like a chair put your um get your your armpits down to your knees while you're maintaining the integrity of your back um and it's like if you combine if you i guess if you break down the squat into all of its individual movements you'll find that you have uh like the lower half is just a squat but the upper half is it, it it turns into partially a deadlift and partially a hyperextension and that's how you maximize the force of your body if you want to go for a, a max squat is that it can't just be your legs especially seeing as how the bar is placed on your back you need to include your back as well in the movement and so that's a, a simply as i can those are a few things that you should probably work on if you want to improve your squat uh, thanks for watching. Hope you guys um, keep doing great, keep progressing, keep trying. And that's it for today.